little too, y'all, we come with cursed objects that scientists fear, which is crazy to me. Like, like I didn't know scientists, like, feared anything. Like, because, like, I thought scientists, like, always have a logical, like, answer for anything. Like, if, like, say my car just started flying out of nowhere. Like, they would be like, well, your car started flying because once you stepped out your car and you, you stepped in a piece of grass, which, which released a chemical that, that, like, made the, the like, the air in the hemisphere made your car fly. Like that's like that's what I'm expecting them to say. Like so, I'm I, I'm just want, I just want to see why they scared of an object. That like, it doesn't make sense to me. But welcome, new people, new subscribers. Let's get to the video. Ah, they're constantly searching for answers. Talk to me. But not all things in this world can be explained. Now, even really? if you are a big believer in science, I have to warn you before watching this video. It'd be best to sprinkle a ring of salt around you. Nigga, maybe what? burn some sage. Because we're about to investigate phenomenon that defy I ain't got all no salt. logic. From dolls what that the? grow human hair to shape-shifting masks that steal You got a beard? Souls. I mean, a mustache? Hold those wards of protection close as we take a look at yet more of the world's Yo. most cursed objects that scientists can't explain. This sound fire. Hold on. I'm kind of curious. Hold on. Talk to me. Valley of the Dolls. Many people find dolls cute, but I would argue there's literally nothing creepier. Low key. Case in point, let me introduce you to Little Jimmy. Fuck this little doll Jimmy. was won by 12 year old Leroy Bland at a Kentucky carnival in 1910. He won The that? doll is creepy enough with its cracked porcelain face and unsettling blood red smile, but its story only got darker when, in 1914, the First World War broke out. Leroy's mother knitted Jimmy its own soldier uniform to honor all the brave young men serving in the war. Little did she know that World War I would become one of the most deadly conflicts in all of history, with a casualty toll estimated between 15 to 22 oh million. Oh my god! Yeah, little Jimmy here became a pretty dark talisman. But he just looks creepy. Yeah. Whereas I've got two real life stories of truly cursed dolls. And it'll be up to you to decide which of these disturbing dolls like he deserves won't. the title of most cursed toy. Are you ready? First up, we have the Him. 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 He's. Nigga, why is he looking at me like that? It's him! He's the cursed object! He is him! What the f Boy, I want to curse, cause like, but I'm trying to, to to tone myself down. What the f is that? What a is three that? Foot tall doll dressed in a sailor suit. What Looks is that? Innocent enough, right? No. Well, wait until you've heard its full twisted tale. It's more than 117 years old, oh and is presently on display at the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. I would never. But go. before he came to the museum in 1994. He was the property of Jean Otto, who was gifted the handmade doll he did. as a child. He did. Jean named the doll Robert and quickly became attached to his new toy. Robert. Until one night, Jean woke up to find Robert sat at the edge of his bed. Yeah, I bet. Moments later, his mother was awakened by the sound of Jean's screams and furniture being thrown around the room. When she finally opened the door, the bedroom was a mess and Jean was crying. When she asked Jean what happened, he pointed at the doll, still at the foot of the bed, and said, Robert did it. Did this what? would become Jean's catchphrase whenever something was broken or went missing in their home. Mm. Sounds like a typical child's excuse to lie their way out of trouble, or so Jean's parents thought. True. They soon began witnessing other supernatural phenomenon, claiming they often heard their son upstairs talking to the doll before hearing a different voice respond. There were also reports of the sound of a demented giggling, and visitors spotted Robert running up Did the stairs. Did he just run? Despite these spooky accounts, Robert continued to live with Jean, and eventually, as Jean grew out of his doll phase, no. Robert was stored away in a trunk in the attic. But children in the street claimed they saw Robert staring out at them from the attic window. What? It felt like he was watching. Always what? watching. They swore he would disappear and reappear without any explanation. And so kids began avoiding the house altogether. What? Jean sadly passed away in 1974. And when new owners moved into the house, 
Their young daughter was delighted to find Robert. Why? The but this soon took a bad turn. As their daughter the began to claim that the doll was trying to hurt her, they dismissed the kid's claims as an overactive imagination. But soon they began to notice Robert moved around the house even when no one was home. Oh, really? And even visitors noticed his blank expression seemed to change when anyone badmouthed his previous owner, Gene. Eventually, hey. after one too many inexplicable occurrences, Robert was donated to the museum where he resides to this day. Now, locals believe that it was actually the maid of the Otto family who gifted Jean the doll, and having been treated badly by the family, cursed it with dark magic as revenge. Mm. However, no records Sorry have been found to prove this, <laughs> and scientists can't accurately what? test or prove the claims of this mischievous doll, as they were all from eyewitness statements. Though many people swear their photos are ruined if they ever try to take selfies with Robert without his permission. Despite his supposedly wicked nature, Robert has become something of a celebrity. What? He receives fan letters from across the globe. Yeah. Lock him up, lock everybody up. Anybody who sent that letter, lock them up. They don't deserve. They don't deserve to be free. They don't deserve to be free. He has moment. more than a thousand Facebook friends. He got more than me. It's kind of embarrassing to know I have less friends than a haunted oh, dog. Oh God! While Robert's cursed story might leave you feeling uneasy. There are dolls what out the? there with an even more hair-raising past. And for this next one, we need to hop across the globe to Japan and rewind all the way back to 1918. It was here that a young man named Ikichi Suzuki was traveling through That's northern Japan man. when he saw a small 16-inch tall doll dressed in a kimono for sale. Without a 16 inches ain't small. A second thought, he bought the doll and when he got home, gifted it to his two-year-old sister, Kikiko. The little girl loved the doll so much, she decided to name it after herself, calling it Okika. Okay. However, a year later, Japan was overrun with yellow fever, an infectious and deadly disease that resulted in many fatalities, Damn. including poor Kikuko. The family buried her and put the doll in their family's shrine a common practice in many Japanese households to commemorate the dead. The family would regularly pay their respects to the doll in honor of their daughter. But one day, when he opened the shrine, Akichi noticed something unbelievably strange. When he bought the doll, it had a neat little shoulder-length bob haircut. But now, the doll's hair was much longer. It had grown into a shaggy mess that reached down to its knees. Unable to explain what was happening, the family cut the doll's hair and placed it back in the shrine. But when they opened the shrine again, its hair had grown back. No matter how much they cut Okiku's hair, it wouldn't be long before it required another terrifying trim. Unable to explain what was happening, the family soon began to believe that the spirit of their daughter was living inside the doll. Well, in 1938, they made the difficult decision to move to another district but they decided against taking the Okiku doll with them, Smart. as they feared that whatever fueled this hair-growing magic relied on a close proximity to their daughter's grave. Okay. And so, the family requested their local temple take care of the doll. Okiku is now housed in a private shrine in the Meninji Temple in Hokkaido, Japan, and locals claim that Okiku's hair continues to grow, with the monks of the temple apparently still having to trim the doll's hair to this day. Now, I think it's important to note that during the first half of the 20th century, many parts of Japan were pre-industrial and rural, where folklore was rife. Local legends were told of evil spirits and creatures harassing normal folk, and dolls in particular were regarded as powerful instruments of magic. So Okiku's growing hair may just be a local legend. But what's really freaky is that the hair has been tested, and it was found to be real human hair. What? Like the story wasn't freaky enough already. Was someone perhaps changing Okiku's hair out somehow? And if so, why? Now under the protection of the monks that serve the shrine, with all photography of the doll presently prohibited, scientists may never be able to determine exactly where this hair is coming from, or if this tale is even real. One thing's for sure, though. Don't mess with dolls. Which of these dolls creeped you out the most? That for Robert, Robert, hit that subscribe Robert. button. And for Okiku, Robert. hit that like button. All done? Great. Now let me introduce you to some other cursed Man, objects that chair, defy a chair, explanation. Uh. 
grizzly chair. This is the Busby Stoop Chair. Looks like a pretty ordinary chair, right? Yeah. Well, it's been permanently nailed to this wall, wow. purposefully out of reach of any butts that might accidentally sit on it. But wow. why? Yeah. Well, Thomas Busby, after whom the chair was named, was actually a criminal who operated in North Yorkshire, England back in 1702. He ran a coin counterfeiting business with his father-in-law, flooding the market with fake currency. And after an argument between the two got violent, Thomas ended up slaying his father-in-law. There are several variations on what happens next, but one claims Thomas was drunk in his favorite inn, sat in his favorite old oak chair when officers came to arrest him. Before they took him away, he blankly uttered, May death come to anyone who dare sit in my chair. Some very choice last words indeed. His lifeless body was exhibited on the gibbet, or stoop, that stood at the crossroads where the inn was, which would later inspire its name change. The villagers didn't think much of it at first, but then slowly, they realized that some who chose to sit in the chair didn't live for much longer. One of the most dramatic stories from 1894 concerned a chimney sweep. Drinking at the inn, he decided to sit in Busby's chair and was found dead the following morning. Mm. Soon after, an apprentice challenged his co-worker to tempt the chair's curse, a bet he soon came to regret as the co-worker died shortly after. What's more, many of the young soldiers who sat in the chair before going off to fight in World War II never returned from the battlefield. It was only in the 1970s, after a delivery driver sat in the chair and perished in a crash a few hours later, what? that the landlord decided to be rid of the 300-year-old curse and donated the chair to the th Nah, no bush, bro. Whoever owned this, like, um, uh, inn should be charged, bro. Because you let a bunch of people sit in this chair knowing, you know, but you know there's a curse, and you just, you're just like, okay. Okay, we're gonna wait till like 300 people die, then we go to the chair. Like, bro, come on. So on the 200, not the, like on the 99, you was like, all right, bro, we're gonna let the, we're gonna let the delivery drive. If he don't die, then we're gonna chill out. But if he die, we're gonna, come on, bro, come on, bro. Like, Thirsk Museum. Yo, Today, wild it can be seen pinned to the wall, eternally reserved for Thomas Busby, and well out of reach of anyone who might Why try to Why do you care about that chair so much, though? Now, it's important to note that there have never been any official records linking the timeline of the victims sitting in the chair and their demises. Mm. It's practically all hearsay. Moreover, a furniture expert believes on the basis of the design and wood used that the chair in the museum was actually made in 1840, 138 years after, after Thomas it. Busby was executed. So the only definitive way to prove whether or not the Bubsy Stoop chair is cursed is to take a seat. Unsurprisingly, no scientist has been bold enough to try. Me? I'm not gonna try this. <laughs> Toxic mask ulinity. What? Have you ever heard the phrase, turn that frown upside down? Yeah. Well, Japanese no masks do that literally. Really? A no mask is a traditional wooden mask used in Japanese theater, specially carved to represent either a smiling face or a frowning face, depending on the angle that the mask is viewed. If you tilt your head downwards while wearing the mask, it appears more joyful or relieved. But if the mask is tilted upwards, it will seem depressed or sad. However, only trained actors are allowed to wear these masks, because a cursed legend haunts their very existence. According to folklore dating back to the 14th century, no masks have the ability to absorb negative emotions such as anger, hostility, or jealousy. The mask then creates its own evil identity, draining away the life force of the one wearing it. The legend even states that the mask will remain on the person even after their body begins to rot. That is to say, the mask will possess the dead body to search for its next victim. Though this is all just Japanese folklore, it's a legend scientists have never been able to riddle the truth out of. So where did such a sinister curse even come from? It might be linked to how wearing a mask affects one's behavior, as being anonymous psychologically empowers people to do things they might not ordinarily do. But being anonymous and Wait, being a possessed husk of a human are two very different things. 
Even so, one thing's for sure. These masks okay, the are ten head? times scarier than the ones we're all used to wearing. For so. <laughs> Under pressure. They say that diamonds are a girl's best friend. But it turns out black diamonds are a girl's waking nightmare. Wow. Unlike colorless diamonds, natural black diamonds contain trace amounts of graphite within them, mm. which give the stones a solid black coloring. Makes and there's perhaps no more stunning specimen than the huge 67.5 carat black Orlov diamond. Although it was once even more stunning at a colossal 195 carats. It was discovered in 19th century India, where it was stolen by a greedy Jesuit cleric from a statue of Brahma, the Hindu god of creation. The jewel is officially known as the Eye of Brahma, who apparently did not take kindly to his eye being stolen. A catastrophic curse followed in the wake of all those who came into contact with the black diamond. An eye for an eye, as they say. Makes Following the diamond's western world tour, Dang, was a trail moving. of destruction. Akin to an assassin skilled at making members of the upper class meet highly mysterious ends. Mm. Its new owner then supposedly tried to break the curse by splitting the diamond into three. Before having one of the gems, what we now know as the Black Orlov, recut and set into a necklace, which sold for $352,000 back in 2006. Damn. However, skepticism has been cast on this so-called curse. Whether this is a case of incredible coincidence or complete fabrication, I don't think anyone's keen to wear that big black diamond anytime soon. However, the Black Orlov I isn't the only gem stolen from India with a curse set upon it. This jewel is tellingly named the Cursed right. Amethyst. Sounds pretty apt until you learn it's actually a purple sapphire. Mm. The legend of this stone begins back in 1857 when cavalryman Colonel W. Ferris is said to have Ferris brought the man? amethyst to England after it was stolen out of a sacred temple of Indra. Ooh. And just like the other stone stolen from an Indian temple, it soon took its revenge. The colonel's health rapidly deteriorated, and he went bankrupt. Dang. After his son inherited the stone, the same fate befell him. Then, in 1890, Edward Heron Allen received the stone and almost immediately, he too was plagued by disasters. He quickly re-gifted the stone to a friend who was a singer, but she suddenly lost her voice after receiving it. Finally, desperate to be rid of it, Edward threw it into the Regent's Canal. Yet, three months later, the stone was rescued from the canal by a dredger, who sold it to a dealer who recognized the gem and returned it to Edward. He became so paranoid about the stone that he packed it away in seven boxes before locking it inside a bank safe. Blame. Edward eventually declared the safe could only be opened three years after his death, which happened in 1943. The stone was then donated to the British Museum, with three. a warning note from Edward listing its history of evil. Mm. Today, the stone remains locked up in the vault of the Natural History Museum in London where it's forbidden to touch. I might have to go. Now, the rational part of me wants to believe this is nothing more than a string of incredible coincidence. But as even museum experts aren't taking their chances, maybe this curse is legit. Either way, I don't think I'll be purchasing any giant, super expensive gemstones from here on. <sighs> like that was ever a risk. She. <laughs> Say boo. Boo. We all want that one perfect Instagram it? selfie. And it's super annoying when people photobomb your perfect pose. But have you ever been photobombed by a ghost before? No. It may sound ridiculous, but ghosts have been appearing in photographs long before the first selfie was ever taken. In fact, the art of capturing ghosts on film, called spirit photography, can be traced all the way back to the 19th century. In the 1860s, American photographer William Mumler appeared to capture an image of a very famous ghost, Ooh. the deceased President Abraham Lincoln. Nigga, that is not Abe Lincoln, boy. Who the hell? Do y'all see Abe Lincoln? Why his beard? His beard don't even look. Nigga, that was like Loki from um from Mar from Marvel and shit. I just I don't like no no Abraham Lincoln. I see the forehead though. That nigga got a big ass forehead.
who was stood behind his wife, Mary. Ooh, Following his wife this, may be, William's I don't know. business boomed as he received a whole list of clients keen to make a paranormal connection with their loved ones. But with huge popularity came the equally huge skeptics. Most prominent among them was P.T. Barnum, the businessman who popularized the Three Ring Circus, who took William to court. He charged William with exploiting grieving families by deliberately faking these ghost photos. How you gonna fake it, the though? crux moment of the trial came when a photograph was presented of P.T. Barnum with none other than the ghost of Abraham Damn Lincoln. Abe Lee gang, you see, these ghost photographers actually relied on one clever trick. What? William would insert a previously prepared glass plate featuring what? an image of the deceased into the camera in front of an unused glass plate That's that was wrong. used to capture an image of the client. That's wrong, this bro. double exposure technique then superimposed a ghostly image of the deceased onto the main photo, That's evil. creating a spectral sight. That's evil, bro. This followed even creepier allegations that William had actually broken into its clients' houses to steal photos of their deceased relatives. While in other cases, the supposed spirits featured in these photos were actually previously taken portraits of people still alive. Despite the evidence mounted against him, William was acquitted of fraud. Mm. However, he didn't escape the court of public opinion, and with his reputation ruined, his business never recovered. But even though ghosts appearing in old photographs has been thoroughly debunked, Ghostly figures still keep appearing in iPhone photo reels today. Does Apple have a secret streaming contract with the dead? Well, actually, it's due to the way smartphones take photos. Unlike analog film, which after that, an image in one what flash, smartphones take right. photos in stages, just like a scanner moves over a piece of paper. The smartphone's camera sensors oh. need time to record all the picture's information. This is called image aliasing. And as a result, anything moving through the shot could appear distorted in the photo. So this is a spooky mystery that scientists can solve. Okay. What they can't figure out, though, is people's continuing belief in ghosts despite all the evidence disproving their existence. Mm. What about you? Do you believe in ghosts? Let me know down in the comments below. I don't know. Below. I really don't know. <laughs> A chance in hell. What the hell? Professional I mean, rivalries can lead to some damn dirty business, true. no matter what industry they're in. However, back in the 1890s, one professional rivalry within the Welsh architect community took a demonic turn. It was at this time that St. Mary's Church in the city center of Swansea decided to undertake some major renovations. Okay. One local architect offered to take on the project but he was turned down in favor of an outside contractor. Enraged by this snub, he began to plot a most devilish revenge. He bought a row of cottages next to the church, demolished them, and built red brick offices in their place before planting a three-foot-tall carved sculpture of a devil. This nigga is evil. <laughs> What? Bro, that's the most pettiest thing I've ever heard. He said, bet, you're not going to let me on a project? Bet, I'm going to buy, buy every every building next to it and make it demon theme. Hey, he was on time, man. BT, well, it. Uh, those eyes really follow you around, don't they? The vengeful architect reportedly cursed the church by saying, when your church is destroyed and burnt to the ground, my devil will remain laughing. Wow. Ooh. Who knew edgelords existed before Reddit? Oh, the devil statue became known as Old Nick, and he unblinkingly watched over the holy house day after day from his spot on the roof. Wow. And then, a little over 50 years later, what? during World War II, the Germans bombed Swansea. The 72-hour bombardment damaged 11,000 buildings and raised 872 to the ground, yeah. including St. Mary's Church. Ooh. Almost every structure in the city center was flattened, but the building with old Nick on top, no way. shockingly, remained no standing. Way. The architect's curse had come to pass in one of the most statistically unlikely ways possible, what? though eventually old Nick's building was demolished in 1962. Yeah, you got to, you got to and the statue mysteriously disappeared. What? But with the devil's luck, old Nick was later recovered in an English garage. What? After a quick makeover, 
when a sinister stone statue was put on watch in the Swansea Quadrant shopping center. But given his history, the locals felt uneasy yeah, with him buddy. unblinkingly Why watching do that? and so he was relocated to the Swansea Museum in 2019. Okay. Today, he can be found safely sat behind glass and out of the eyeline of any nearby churches. Look at his eyes. <laughs> Evil Elmo. <laughs> What? Sesame Street is one of the most beloved children's programs right. in the world, you got with to. the little Muppet Elmo being an iconic main part of the show. It's it a... quickly became a popular children's toy, but back in 2008, one two-year-old in Florida had an encounter with his Elmo doll that chilled his mother to the bone. It's that a... day, Melissa Bowman was watching her son James play with his Elmo Knows Your Name doll a personalized plush talking electronic toy. Okay. When suddenly, the fuzzy doll blurted out, Kill James. What's worse, the toddler then started parroting the phrase. The doll and the toddler began repeating, Kill James, Kill James, in a maniacally cultish chant. The Eventually, the doll's batteries ran out, but even when they were replaced, Elmo continued to repeat in a sing-song voice, Kill James. Had some kind of demon-possessed Elmo turning the toy into a bloodthirsty machine? It turns out it may have been more sinister than that, as this particular Elmo doll can be programmed to repeat phrases and remember your child's name. It seems impossible, but unless Elmo was really possessed, someone must have uttered the evil phrase to the doll for it to learn it in the first place. Ooh. Well, never thought I'd be rooting for the demonic possession explanation, but here we are. <laughs> Gauze what? and effect. Okay, just so you know, I'm putting myself on the line by just telling you guys about this next item. What are you talking about? This is what's known as the unlucky mummy. Okay. Though technically, it's not actually a mummified corpse, but rather just a sarcophagus lid of an unknown high-status Egyptian woman from around 900 BCE. Damn. The artifact was found at Thebes in the late 1800s, okay. where it was donated to the British Museum. But why the name? Well, records state that of the four Englishmen who initially bought it, two perished in suspicious accidents and two lost their fortune and perished in poverty. It's said that this ancient artifact brought death, illness, and bankruptcy to any who came into contact with it, hence its now very apt nickname. But why? It's possibly because the unknown woman carved into the lid was actually a priestess of the powerful sun god Amen-Ra. Mm. She may have used powerful ceremonial magic to curse anyone who dare disturb her final resting place. And to be fair, I'd be pretty angry too if someone stole my coffin lid. Do make sense. However, the most unbelievable part of this artifact story links it to one of the worst disasters in modern history, the sinking of the Titanic what? in 1912. While it wasn't on the doomed oh. cruise ship, one of the 1,500 victims lost to the Titanic was journalist William Stead. He was the very first to pen articles about the mummy's curse. Survivors from the disaster recall William telling stories of the ominous artifact over dinner. Perhaps that alone was enough to tempt the fate of the mummy's misfortune. Wow. It could just be an eerie coincidence, or more likely, a total fallacy. Because aside from the sunken journalist, there are no factual records linking anyone's untimely demise to the coffin lid. Mm. So it was more than likely just a ghost story, made up to spark interest in this old artifact. Lucky me. Well, I'm still here. It looks like the... Fire your video, bro. If y'all enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know y'all favorite um curse item. Shit, none of these are my favorite, but these are weird. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one was the most weird though. Robert was crazy. I'm not gonna. Robert just. I'm not. I don't even want to say that man name. Nah, like he he was just crazy to me. But if y'all, but y'all, I love y'all. Stay safe. Um, if y'all do go visit these. Make sure y'all let me know. Let me know. Send pictures. And I'll see y'all next video. We out. Ugh.